We've thought about the rotational motion of this disk in terms of position and velocity and acceleration and the torque that causes that motion. And it also clearly contains kinetic energy. It's moving. It has energy of motion. If I let it hit my hand, it can transfer energy to my hand. So we know there's some energy there. So let's go ahead and just define it as rotational kinetic energy, which is, of course, just the energy of rotational. So, so far, I've just turned the definition around on you. And now I'm going to hit you with the main word, motion. We know kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Now you may say, how is this any different from the other kinetic energy that we did in translational motion? And the difference is, when I do this and give it kinetic energy, what is its center of mass doing? Nothing. If we treat this as a point particle at its center of mass, it's just sitting there doing nothing. And you can't tell that it has any kinetic energy. You have to zoom out and see that it's an extended structure, which has an orientation. And that orientation is changing. And there, at that level, it has kinetic energy. So there is a distinction between translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. Let's see, if we want to um, give the equation, I'll go ahead and put ROT. Just to make it clear, we're talking about the, the rotational version. And then it is 1 half i omega squared. And you can see the analogy between translational and rotational continues to rage on 1 half i is similar to m, and omega is similar to v. This energy, like all energies, is also a scalar. And if we want the unit, we can work out the unit real quick. i is in kilogram meter squared, and omega squared is radians per second. If you square it, that's radians squared per second squared. Radians aren't real, so we'll just put the second squared down there. So kilogram meter squared per second squared is equal to a joule. So sure enough, rotational kinetic energy is in joules, and it better be because energy is energy. It doesn't matter if it's rotational or not. So it's a good thing it came out in joules. This energy obeys all the other rules we talked about in translational. The work energy theorem, you can uh, you can uh, have some work to convert your kinetic, rotational kinetic energy to potential, and then work can also convert it from potential back to, to this one. So you have the work energy theorem, you have conservation of energy. It's all the same, except this is for something rotating rather than something translating.